Hey everyone, Vinayak here. RAM is something that is critical to your system. You have too little and the system slows down and have too much. Well, I don't think there's much of a problem there. Uh, but then there's the single channel, dual channel conundrum. In this video, let's check out the advantages of uh, single channel, dual channel and also RAM of various speeds. So how much performance do we lose or get off them? So let's check it out. I have with me a few RAM sticks. These are 8GB 2400MHz RAM, 4 of them for a total of 32GB. And this one is a single 8GB 3000MHz stick. And already in my system are 16 into 2 32GB of total RAM at 3200MHz. So let's try out the various setups and see how much of an effect on performance each configuration has. So for the test bench, we have a Ryzen 5 3600 processor on a MSI B550 Pro VDH Wi-Fi motherboard, a Inno 3D RTX 2070 Super GPU, an Antec 700W power supply, and OS is Windows 10. These will remain the same throughout the test, but the RAM configuration will change. Okay, I've done my test with each of the configurations and I have bar charts for the same. So let's analyze the numbers we have. 3D Mark, the favorite of most benchmarkers, I am running TimeSpy first. Here are the charts for TimeSpy on the different RAM configurations. Looks like the 16 into 2 32 GB is running the best on the lot with a score of 9414. These are 3200 MHz RAM and so should have the maximum through output in dual channel mode. Second in the set is 8 GB into 4 for a total of 32 GB. At 9365 is not that far off from the 3200 MHz RAM, but these DIMMs are running at 2400 MHz, so a drop in performance had to occur. Third is the 8 into 2 2400 MHz RAM at 16 GB. At 9213, it just edges out the single channel 16 GB 3200 MHz RAM, which is at fourth place. A drop in score is visible when we have only one DIMM in single channel mode with a score of 9212. Fifth is 48 GB, which are 16 into 2 3200 MHz and 8 into 2 2400 MHz. The RAM will all sync to the slowest, so the DIMMs are running at 2400 MHz. This is my first mix test and the performance hit is visible at 9211 points. Mixing the 16 into 2 3200MHz RAM with one 8GB 3000MHz RAM dropped the score even lower to 9066 which is the lowest of the lot even though the total is 40GB. Now for times by extreme. The values look almost the same as before with 16 into 2 32GB at 3200MHz stopping the charts at 4443. Second is 8 into 4 32 at 2400 MHz with a score of 4430. This time in third place is the 16 into 2 3200 MHz plus 8 into 2 2400 MHz 48 GB in total. Then we have 8 into 2 2400 MHz for 16 GB. Under that is single channel 16 GB and 16 into 2 plus 8 into 1 coming in last. Next is Port Royal. This test also includes ray tracing. The numbers are similar again. 16 GB into 2 is the highest at 5973, followed by 8 GB into 2 at 5967. 48 and 32 GB, which is 8 into 4, has tied for 5955, followed by 40 GB, and the last being single channel 16 GB. Maybe ray tracing likes more RAM, but if that was the case, why 8 into 4 is lower than 8 into 2? Some surprising results over there. Now for content creation, I have a 4K timeline here which I'm rendering using hardware acceleration with the NVIDIA 2070 Super. But the render is also processor brown to some level, so let's see if the amount of RAM and their speeds affect performance. The charts show the same as before with 16 into 2 totaling 32 at 3200MHz being the fastest at 3 minutes 18 seconds, followed by 3 minutes 21 seconds with 8 into 4 at 32GB. 48 and 40 GB both seem to be on equal footing at 3 minutes 25 seconds with single channel 16 into 1 at 3 minutes 42 seconds. And surprisingly, 8 into 2 16 GB being the slowest of the lot at 4 minutes 7 seconds. I was expecting the dual channel mode to help with the rendering in um, Premiere. Cinebench is another benchmark which showed quite a surprising result with 40 GB topping the charts at with a score of 8956. 16 GB into 1 at 8955 which is very close, is one point off. 16 into 2, 32 GB, the one that was performing the best until now is at 8891, followed by 8736 for 48 GB. The 8 GB sticks at 2400 MHz seem to be doing the worst at either config at 32 GB scoring 8686 and 16 GB at 8677. These scores are surprising. I would have expected the 16 into 2 at 3200 MHz to have won, 
but more RAM at the right speed does better. Next, for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, a favorite of many as it's equally GPU and CPU bound. Highest score is by the 48 GB at 9750, followed by 9738, which is 32 GB, which is 16 into 2 at 3200 megahertz. 32 GB, which is 8 into 4, came in third, and 40 GB came in fourth at 9721. Single channel 16 into 1 came in fifth with 8 into 2 at 9716. Well, the numbers say it all. Mixing faster RAM modules with slower ones would lock the speed to the slowest to sync the speeds. Performance didn't fluctuate too much, but most of the time the system worked better with max RAM with the highest speed, which is evident if you check the charts again. That the 16 into 2 32 GB at 3200 megahertz ran the best, except for Tomb Raider, where the game seemed to like more RAM than speed. When mixing RAM, if you can keep to a certain manufacturer, that would help with keeping the timings in sync a lot. If you do need to mix multiple sizes, it will work, but the faster RAM will run at the lowest speed. But there could be memory incompatibility issues causing Windows to be unstable and crash. Try to pair modules of the same size and speed to take advantage of dual channel memory on the motherboard. I have used mixed memory on my gaming laptops earlier and it worked fine. AMD Ryzen seems to like fast RAM, so mixing modules can cause problems. Intel seems to be more forgiving in this factor. I didn't add 8 GB to the test as I was having a lot of problems with even starting the test, so I kept the minimum at 16 GB. If you have some DIMMs lying around and you want to increase the maximum RAM available in the system, test it out first. So the final verdict: Yes, you can run modules with mixed sizes and speeds, but there could be a performance and stability trade-off. Make sure to test before settling on the configuration, as one of the modules could be bringing down the entire performance of the system, which could be fixed by just removing it. I am running at 16 into 2 32 GB at 3200 megahertz, as it has the best performance and stability. Even though I have the option of adding two more 8 GB sticks for a total of 48 GB RAM, so that was the video. Hope you liked it. Mail me your questions at techattalkingstuff.net and also make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are added. Thank you for watching and see you all next time.